Hello, everybody. So nice to see everybody. So lovely to see everybody. Hello, everybody. Oh, I was just checking to see if I was live, and I am. <laughs> so, welcome. I'm so happy you joined us. Um, tonight, we are going to be sitting mindfully for mindful meditation. It's a great way to come back to ourselves after a busy, wacky day. Um, if you've been working all day, if you've been relaxing all day, no matter what you've been doing, so happy that you're here. Um, this is a deposit that you're putting in the bank of yourself. So, good job. Um, today, we are going to be sitting mindfully. We are going to be breathing together, and we are also going to be practicing the 16 exercises from the Sutra on the Full Awareness of Breathing, um, which is a sutra that Thich Nhat Hanh has translated um, so beautifully, actually. Um, the translation is in this book, Awakening from the Heart by Thich Nhat Hanh, and um, the con he has an excellent commentary in this book that explains a lot about the sutra and I'll talk about the sutra a little bit more later but in essence this sutra is all about coming back first of all to the mind and then the feelings and then the body and then ultimately to um, come into the ultimate dimension which is a dimension where there is no separation um, and Practicing these 16 exercises is great if you have the time to do them all together, but in the sutra it says you do not have to practice them in sequential order. You can just practice the first four. And the first four are just focused on calming the body and calming, calming yourself so that you can begin to practice. So let's go ahead and go into our first seated meditation of the night. So go ahead and get yourself into a comfortable position where your feet are flat on the floor and your posture, your spine is erect and upright and you feel a sort of like a comfortable ease somewhere between restfulness and wakefulness. Um, and, excuse me, the goal of meditation is to not just completely empty your mind and push all thoughts away. Um, in fact, it's just the opposite. It's to welcome whatever comes up, to honor whatever comes up, and to just be with those thoughts and those feelings. So, I'm going to invite the bell three times. And in between each time I invite the bell, I'd like to just ask that maybe you take a couple three maybe three breaths or so in between each invitation of the bell okay Body, speech, and mind, and perfect oneness. We send our hearts out along with the sound of this bell. May all who hear it awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. Breathing in a long breath. I know I am breathing in a long breath. 
breathing out a long breath. I know I am breathing out a long breath. Breathing in a short breath. I know I am breathing in a short breath. Breathing out a short breath. I know I am breathing out a short breath. Breathing in, I am aware of my whole body. Breathing out, I am aware of my whole body. Breathing in, I calm my whole body. Breathing out, I calm my whole body. Breathing in, I feel joyful. Breathing out, I feel joyful. Breathing in, I feel happy. Breathing out, I feel happy. Breathing in. I am aware of my mental formations. Breathing out, I am aware of my mental formations. Breathing in, I calm my mental formations. Breathing out, I calm my mental formations. Breathing in, I am aware of my mind. Breathing out, I am aware of my mind. Breathing in, I make my mind happy. Breathing out, I make my mind happy.
Breathing in, I concentrate my mind. Breathing out, I concentrate my mind. Breathing in, I liberate my mind. Breathing out, I liberate my mind. Breathing in, I observe the impermanent nature of all dharmas. Breathing out, I observe the impermanent nature of all dharmas. Breathing in, I observe the disappearance of desire. Breathing out, I observe the disappearance of desire. Breathing in, I observe cessation. Breathing out, I observe cessation. Breathing in, I observe letting go. Breathing out, I observe letting go. We'll now move in to silent meditation until the next sound of the bell. Please enjoy your breath.
And I'd like to invite the small bell for stretching and massage. So go ahead and stretch your body. We've been sitting for the past 15 minutes. <laughs> ah. Yes. So we will be doing a longer sit um, a little later on in this uh, program in about 10 minutes or so, five minutes or so. Um, but I wanted to talk about the exercises that we just did. So um, again, for anybody who is just showing up a little bit past um, when I introduced what we were doing, those exercises came from Awakening of the Heart, which is a huge, look at how big this book is. It's a very big book that has a lot of commentaries and also sutras um, by the Buddha. Sutras are basically like, um, I don't know if you guys grew up Catholic like I did, but I grew up Catholic and in the Bible, there are these books and these books are talking about these stories that were translated um, through the gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and, you know, a lot of other ones, too. But um, that's, it's essentially what these sutras are. Sutras, these are teachings. Um, that's what the word sutra means. And um, if you think of it, it comes from the word suture. Like, I just had some dental work done, and they suture your gums together, so suture means to stitch together, and the sutra, S-U-T-R-A, is it's like stitching together knowledge. It's stitching together parables and stories and teachings. Um, it's it's and storytelling is the fabric of our lives. And a lot of these sutras are told in storytelling form, um, which is you know that's what happened in the Bible and also in the Bhagavad Gita. Um, so anyhow, the, we did 16 exercises just now, um, and they are broken down into four sections of four exercises. And basically what the first four exercises are is to calm your body, just get you centered. And again, you do not have to do these, these exercises in sequential order. You can do just, you can even, some people practice with just one. Like for instance, breathing in a long breath. I know I am breathing in a long breath. Breathing out a long breath. I know I am breathing out a long breath. Some people practice with just that one for a whole month. Just to see um, what comes up. And if there's personal insights that come from just practicing with that one. Very simple, right? Yeah, maybe not so simple, but theoretically simple. So that's the first four. The second set of four exercises focuses on your feelings and settling your feelings. For instance, breathing in, I feel joyful. Breathing out, I feel joyful. Um, Thich Nhat Hanh likes to say, when you put a smile on your face, and maybe you're not feeling pretty smiley, maybe you're not feeling happy, but is it the smile that caused happiness or is it happiness that causes the smile? I really love that because where does it come from? You know, can you make your own happiness or just does happiness happen and then all of a sudden you smile? Um, so the third set of the four exercises focuses on the mind and um, Thich Nhat Hanh and Buddhist psychology, like they like to call thoughts mental formations. That's why um, there was, let me see, there was one about mental formations in here. Breathing in, I calm my mental formations. Breathing out, I calm my mental formations. And mental formations, and now there's a lot of Buddhist psychology around the concept of a mental formation, but there's a concept of mental formations that you have consciousness, you have store consciousness, um, 
and you have seeds and there's 51 seeds that are in there like jealousy um uh peace all sorts of different seeds and so what happens with these seeds is they get watered and what comes up out of these seeds that get watered and they grow mental formations they come to the surface and a thought comes you're so if somebody triggers you and you get you get a mental formation that is triggered Thich Nhat Hanh, the whole teaching of mindfulness is that you are able to work with those mental formations so you can allow some mental formations to not grow from those seeds. You don't water those seeds if you do not want, for instance, the, the seed of jealousy to be watered. But instead you want to water the seed of peace. And so that's what mindfulness practice truly is all about, is watering those seeds that we want the mental formation to grow up out of. We just studied for 12 months. <laughs> it took us one year to get through the book of Anger by Thich Nhat Hanh here in this library Sangha. And he talks a lot about that, about not watering seeds of anger, not rehearsing anger. Um, in, in psychotherapy, he talked about how some psychotherapists like to have the padded bat and the padded um, table and people like whacking the bat because they want to they want to feel angry. And he was asserting that, you know, that's rehearsing our anger. That's theoretically watering the seed of anger. So um, what would it be like if we were to water other seeds? Um, so back to our um, full awareness of breathing exercises. The final four exercises focus on the mind as the object of not a separate self. This gets a little heady, I'm not gonna lie. And I think it's it's out of my job description. <laughs> I'm not a Dharma teacher. So um, there are these ideas of non-duality in Buddhism. And the second set of four exercises, I mean, I'm sorry, the last set of four exercises that we just did, for instance, breathing in, I observe the impermanent nature of all dharmas. Dharmas just means teachings. Breathing out, I observe the impermanent nature of all dharmas. Um, what these last four teachings really focus on are the ultimate dimension. We have a historical dimension that we live in. We have to live here. We have a body. But then we also have the ultimate dimension. It's the dimension of no birth, no death, um, no being, no non-being. Um, so there is no beginning and end in the ultimate dimension. Like I said, this gets a little heady. Um, but I love these last exercises. And again, people can just sit with just one of these. For instance, breathing in, I observe the disappearance of desire. Breathing out, I observe the disappearance of desire. One could sit with that and just ponder that in meditation. So um, if any of these spoke to you, feel free to comment in the comment section. I can even co copy and paste a link to where you can read about these 16 exercises from the Sutra on the Full Awareness of Breathing if you'd like to learn more about it. Um, again, it's from this very large book and it is, the Sutra itself is only two or three pages and the commentary is about 100 pages long. And it's, it's worth a read. Um, I am currently working through it with an aspirant partner um, uh, right now. And it's very exciting to like dive deeply into this beautiful sutra. Um, the Buddha gave us a lot to work with. So it's wonderful to get the backstory and also Thich Nhat Hanh's perspective on all of this. He has a real knack for taking very deep teachings and simplifying them 
so much so that a child can understand them, um, which to me says that he truly and deeply understood them. So with all that said, I just yapped a lot at you. Hopefully it was beneficial. I would like to invite you into our last silent meditation of the evening together. So I'd like to invite you into a comfortable position, seated or lying down, uh, somewhere between restful and wakeful, so that we're not falling asleep, but we're alert and comfortable. And just pay attention to your alignment with your spine and your neck because you wanna be able to sit in a way that is beneficial for your body because when your body can relax, your mind can relax and it can start to explore deeper themes. So I'm gonna invite the bell three times and then we'll sit for a little while in silent meditation until we hear the next sound of the bell. Enjoy your breath.
inviting the bell for stretching and massage. Well, thank you for your practice, everybody. Um, I do want to close with the uh, evoking the name of Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of Compassion. You might know her as Kuan Yin. Um, Kuan Yin is, um, well, it's, it's a, you know how we have saints in uh, Catholicism? I'm seeing it like, you know, the whole world is Catholic. But in the Northeast here, <laughs> I'm in Massachusetts. So in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, there's a great deal of people that are, that were raised Catholic. And so uh, there's saints, right? You have St. Anthony and all that, right? Well, in Buddhism, we have bodhisattvas, and bodhisattvas can be you and I, actually. Um, they're just great awakened beings, right? And so Avalokiteshvara is Kuan Yin, and Kuan Yin is um, the bodhisattva of deep compassion. And I feel like we, we should really close with that tonight because... What we just did today was to have deep, deep compassion for ourselves. We just practiced the 16 exercises on the full awareness of breathing. And what that really does is it allows us to take a deep dive into ourselves, into our bodies, our minds, our mental formations, into our consciousness. And I think when we're doing this kind of work, we really need to have the utmost compassion for ourselves. Um, so I'm going to evoke the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara's name. And like I said, Avalokiteshvara, it's, it's the Vietnamese way to say Quan Yin. And I love the picture of Quan Yin. You'll see a lot of statues with her. She has one hand like this, and she has one hand that's pouring a vase. And that vase is all of the tears of the world. Um, so that's what she does. She, she's the, um the bodhisattva of great compassion. She listens. She listens deeply in order to understand the suffering of the world. So, I evoke your name, Avalokiteshvara. I aspire to learn your way of listening in order to help relieve the suffering in the world. You know how to listen in order to understand. I evoke your name in order to practice listening without any prejudice. I shall sit and listen without judging or reacting. I will sit and listen in order to understand. I will sit and listen so attentively that I will be able to hear what the other person is saying and also what has been left unsaid. I know that just by listening deeply, I already alleviate a great deal of pain and suffering in the other person. And I like to add, and myself. Because I really like to think of this. I, I have this hanging up in my office. Um, I really love to think about this bodhisattva, this evoking the bodhisattva's name. Not just for other people, but also myself. I want to give myself the utmost compassion. Because, you know, I'm the only one who's going to do that, right? I have to take care of myself. And I've been issued this body on planet Earth. And, you know, if I show up to my community empty, then I have nothing to give. So I want to fill myself up and I want to be able to care for myself so that when I show up to my communities, I'm going to be ready and able to listen in order to understand. It takes a great deal of energy to be able to do that. So anyway, thank you so much for being here today. I'd like to say that the next two meetings that we have are December 10th and December 17th. And we are going to delve into a new book called Being Peace. And we just finished the book Anger. So now we're going to be reading Being Peace. So December 10th, we're going to do chapter one. And on December 17th, we're going to be doing chapter two. 
And I don't think that there is an intro. There is a preface, but it's, it's only two pages long. But so that is what we're going to be doing. That's the plan moving forward. I want to thank you so much for your practice. And I'll see you again on December 10th. Leave a comment if this was beneficial for you and maybe what some things, what are some things that you would like to address like topics or practices that you would like to either know more about or practice together as a Sangha because um, we can support to get all, we can support each other. Um, but drop comments and I will, I will read them <laughs> because you'll take this, the precious time to write. So I appreciate that. Thank you for showing up for yourself tonight. Take care and have a good night.